Did you drop your watch on the floor? Cause I did. I'll tell you more about it later, but for now, let's talk about watch maintenance. Start that clock, it's short on time. Much like cars, watches are machines and all machines need maintenance work from time to time. Some are nice and easy like Toyotas and some are more like Land Rovers. With modern watches, maintenance is fairly straightforward. You only need to get it serviced if it stops running or if the accuracy starts to deviate significantly. For modern watches, you're looking at a tune-up roughly every five to 10 years, depending on how much wear and tear you put it through. Vintage watches, especially vintage watches with complications, will require work. If you don't want a lot of hassle, choose either age or complexity. And if you really want a hassle-free watch, I'd recommend going with quartz, since battery-powered movements are simpler and more durable compared to their mechanical counterparts. For example, a G-Shock is built to withstand a 10-meter drop, and in the 80s, the Casio team used to test prototypes by quite literally throwing them out the window. When it comes to water resistance, gaskets will break down over time, and while you can restore water resistance on some vintage watches, I would avoid quote unquote testing the waters on any watch older than say a couple decades old. To clean water resistant watches, simply use soap and water. Vintage watches are best cleaned with a soft cloth dampened with just a bit of warm water. And for all the ladies in the audience or anyone searching for a watch say below 30 millimeters, just be advised they are typically harder and a little bit more expensive to work on. That's because the parts involved are smaller and there's less room for error. Speaking of parts, it's not always a guarantee that you'll be able to find the replacement parts you need. I learned that the hard way when trying to fix a 1950s jumping hour watch from a company that went out of business decades ago. Piling rarity on top of obscurity is cool, but it's not the easiest watch to fix when you drop it on the floor. Twice. This brings us to an important public service announcement. Be careful when putting a watch on and taking it off that's when drops are most likely to happen. Let's talk crystals. If you replace the crystal, be sure to keep the original one just in case you decide to sell later on. Be warned, Rolex is retiring certain crystals, but thankfully, a company called True Dome offers the best alternative to the original. Also, PolyWatch is a nice product that comes in handy for sprucing up acrylic crystals. As a general rule, repair shops will or should give you an estimate before they do any major work. Also, make sure the service center doesn't do anything beyond what you ask them to. For example, make sure they don't polish the case or refinish the dial. This is especially true if you send your watch to the brand itself. In conclusion, you want to keep in mind that every mechanical watch will need a tune-up sooner or later. Vintage watches offer a lot in terms of charm and history, but just be prepared mentally and financially for the extra work that might be involved. A little love goes a long way, and if well maintained, watches can last for generations. Thanks for watching Short on Time. Be sure to like, subscribe, drop a comment below, and as always, enjoy your watches.